Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Beanie and welcome back to another video today We are going to be doing another tutorial. This is going to be my comprehensive zone hitting tutorial I feel like I need to make another one since uh, the, the game has changed so much since I made the original zone hitting tutorial um, I'm gonna go it's gonna be comprehensive though I'm going to go over everything so a lot of the things that I mentioned in this video are things that I mentioned in my last video in April but uh, I feel the need to, to kind of um, to kind of go over it again because a lot of people weren't subscribed to me at that point and um, you know I just feel like it'll be uh, it'll be better if we kind of have like a little bit of a refresher before we go in and get into some of the new ideas that I have uh, with the new patch and everything like that. Um, there are a few things that I'm not going to go over in this video that I might save for another video. Things like situational hitting, uh, what to expect in different types of counts, um, how you should approach at bats with runners on certain bases and, and, and stuff like that. Just a just kind of a situational hitting guide if that's something that you guys would be interested in um let me know in the comments and i will definitely uh put that together for for you guys but uh this is just going to be focused uh more on like the technical side of hitting and how to how to best hit and believe me if you use all of these tips a lot of these tips that i'm going to give is something that i need to work on myself so uh you know you're never going to be perfect but with, if you use these tips and if you really practice you can become one of the best hitters in MLB The Show. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about is lineup construction. This is by far the most boring part of the tutorial, but basically, when, whenever you're constructing your lineup, you want to uh, you want to have a very balanced lineup. You want to get balanced hitters that, uh, that aren't going to be at a platoon disadvantage very often. Um, you want to have a nice balance of lefties and righties. Uh, back whenever you could know the handedness of the starting pitch you were going to be facing I like to go lefty righty lefty righty lefty righty all the way down the lineup now I've subtracted one lefty from the equation and usually generally I think my ideal type of lineup will have three lefties and five righties in in my uh, in my lineup and then if I can get a really good switch hitter in there as well that's always really nice um, the more switch hitters the better honestly because you're always going to have that advantage over the pitcher and if you can build a team with a lot of different switch hitters and then, then that's probably going to be a pretty effective lineup um it is provided that they're good hitters you know but uh so yeah just be mindful of that and you'll also have a lot of cards that have reverse platoon splits so you need to be mindful of that as well guys like the, uh, the Hanley Ramirez, the 88 Hanley Ramirez, who doesn't have a lot of power versus lefties. That's something that you might have to account for whenever you're picking your bench. You might want to get a shortstop that, that hits lefties a little bit better so that uh, that you can pinch hit for Hanley if he faces a lefty and you're not comfortable with that. So, uh, so just be mindful of platoon splits and stuff like that. And then as far as the attributes that you should focus on... Early in the year, it was all about power. The meta was get as much power as possible. Well, the meta, the power is still very, very relevant in the meta, but now contact and vision are also very important. Um, I, I like to personally look for guys that uh, I like to have a balance in my lineup of guys who are more power focused and then guys who are a little bit more balanced that have better vision and good contact while still having, you know, respectable power and all that. But but vision and contact can be very, very beneficial uh, with the with the current state of hitting, because um, it, it, especially vision, because it seems to have a, a, a significant effect on how big your PCI is going to be. For example, that gold Albert Pujols that you get from the Immortal program, it, I think it only has like 66, 44 contact. Um, but it has like 91 vision and his PCI is almost always really big because of that 91 vision. So uh, that, that's why I kind of think vision is a little bit more beneficial than, than contact. And also, whenever you have a really high vision, not, not to say contact isn't important, it's very important, but uh, but when you have good contact and good vision and all that, it also allows you to do some other things um, while you're approaching your at-bat that you might not be able to do with uh, with lower vision guys. We'll talk about that in, in just a little bit. But yeah, I just wanted to, to let you guys know to be mindful of that, of, uh, of, 
of how important vision and contact have become and uh and not to not to think that you can just go with with power all the way across the board with guys that have like 10 vision and uh and and hit as hit as effectively as you would in the past in the past it didn't really matter you were going to have a pretty big pci anyway but they've significantly shrunk down the the size of the pci and how much uh your vision affects that so it's something that you definitely want to look into when constructing your lineup Okay, uh, starting out here with the technical side and everything, um, we're going to talk about just some general hitting tips uh, to start out the video, things that I might have gone over before, but I feel the need to kind of rehash it just to kind of get it fresh in your mind so that we can build off of that and talk about some other things. Uh, the first thing is you've got to learn how to take away the fastball. You've got to work on your bat speed. If you show your opponent that you can turn on an inside fastball consistently, it's going to take away a large part of his repertoire and he's going to have to get mighty creative in order to beat you. Uh, I, I would focus on taking away the fastball first even if it makes you look silly on some uh, off-speed pitches and stuff like that. Even if you look like an idiot, you're way out in front, you're swinging early, you're, swinging early, you're not very disciplined. Uh, you need to figure out a way to be able to consistently take away the fastball and once you've done that that should be goal number one. Once you've done that, you can work on how, uh, how well you're hitting breaking ball how well you're tracking pitches, how well you're doing uh, being patient at the plate and stuff. Um, all of that will come with time, but, but priority number one for you should be to take away the fastball. Um, also, another thing that's that's important uh, right now that, that really it hasn't been that big of a deal in the past is controlling your PCI within the strike zone. Um, right, right now, the one, one of the changes that they made in the patch was that the PCI can extend well beyond the strike zone now. So that makes it that that may seem like a good thing. Okay, now I can hit like those you know pitches that are way outside or whatever. But it actually makes it a little bit more difficult to hit because um, you can't jam your PCI anymore and, and still have an accurate PCI. Used to, you could you could jam your PCI anywhere in the strike zone, and a large portion of it was still going to be in the strike zone, so you could make solid contact on a lot of those pitches that, that now you can't. Now your PCI is going to overcommit past that pitch, and you're going to hit like a chopper or a pop-up or something like that. You're not going to make solid contact. So it's very important in, uh, in, in with today's pass, in, in the hitting climate today that you learn how to control your PCI within the zone and you really start uh, start to work on that so that you don't end up over committing your PCI on a, on juicy pitches as, as I like to say. Next tip is just to be disciplined. Um, this is something that I talk about over and over and over again, but being disciplined is like one of the biggest strengths that someone can have in MLB The Show. If, if you know uh, how to take a bad strike, if you know how to take a walk, you're going to be at a significant advantage uh, in the game because most of your opponents are not going to know how to do that. They, they may know how to take a pitch here or there, but whenever they get like into a full count or something like that in their mind what they're thinking is there's no way he's going to throw a ball there's no way so so i'm just going to swing no matter what and a lot of times when pitching you can take advantage of that if you kind of recognize that, they, that they're that type of player and you can exploit them and get some strikeouts uh, for it but you don't be that type of player you be the type of player who even with a full count you're going to be protecting the plate but you aren't afraid to to, to watch a ball uh, go by and take that walk because a walk is as good as a single when nobody on base. So, uh, so yeah, the, the more men you can get on base, the more opportunities that you're going to have to score. Also, another thing that really, uh, that being very disciplined helps is it helps with your pitch recognition. You're going to be able to read uh, fastballs from change-ups, from curveballs to sliders. You're going to be able to see those pitches a lot better because you're just going to be seeing more of them, right? You're, you're going to be seeing more pitches per game than you normally would have, so it's going to really help you with your pitch recognition. And, um, and also, it, it kind of lets the game come to you. Um, a lot of the, uh, uh, one of the big reasons that people kind of struggle in battle royale is because in the in the short 
type of game that it is, the three inning game, uh, they feel the need to chase runs. They feel like, oh man, I got I got to score right here. I got to score right here, and that leads to them being undisciplined at the plate. Whereas if they were to if they were to kind of rein it in just a little bit and, and let the game come to them, let their opponent make a mistake, uh, take a walk, steal second base, and then hit a single to score that. To, to score that guy, they would win a lot more Battle Royale games if they would just be a little bit more patient and let the game come to them. Don't chase runs. Ch j just let it come to you because I promise you, if you have that mentality, it will. Another thing that I've talked about a lot on this channel is pitch tracking. And uh, it's just the idea of following uh, or using your PCI to follow the ball from the pitcher's release point to the strike zone. And uh, a lot of people seem to have trouble with this and they don't really know where to start their PCI. And uh, they don't know, should they keep it in the middle of the plate and not touch it and then just kind of like react to it? Definitely don't do that. What you want to do is you, you can either do one of two things. You can either set your PCI slightly up and in um, you know, relative to, to your batting handedness. Um, or what you can do is you can set up your PCI to, to coincide with where the pitcher's release point is going to be. And then from there, you can, uh, you can follow the pitch a little bit better. I personally start mine up and in, but I know a lot of guys who have success with starting their PCI at the pitcher's release point. And, uh, and it helps them for whatever reason, it helps them track the ball just a little bit better. Um, Something that I see uh, a surprising number of guys do that is an awful, awful, awful idea is they start their PCI low. Never, ever, ever, even if your opponent is like pounding the lower half of the zone and he never throws the ball in the upper half, never, ever, ever start your PCI low. It's just not a very good idea. Um, it, it, unless you're like a beginner and you're kind of guessing, you know, where the ball is going to be or something like that. Just don't do it because it's a lot more difficult to react uh, with your analog stick going low to high than it is going high to low. You can do high to low very quickly. Low to high is is pretty slow, and it's also um, just really difficult to control your PCI uh, mo moving in that direction. So do not start low. It's it's a it's a catastrophic error that I see a lot of people make. The last tip for, for pitch tracking is something that, I, that is, a, is a tip that I've gave a couple times on this channel, and, uh, and, and people responded really well to it. So if you haven't heard this already, um, I'm glad that I can tell you now, but, uh, but if, like, um, if you start a Road to the Show character, start, make a catcher. And uh, w whenever you make your catcher, go to your settings, to your advanced settings, and turn the defensive, uh, the catcher defensive indicator or something like that, turn it on. And what that'll do is that'll bring up a glove in the like when you're whenever you're catching uh, in, out in the field or whatever, it'll bring up a glove that kind of simulates a PCI. And the pitcher will, it, he'll tell you where he's going to throw it, but it's not always going to be in that exact area. It's going to be like a little bit off of it. And it, and, and you've got to put your glove where the ball is going to be. And that really, really, really helps you with, uh, with controlling the, the analog stick and being able to, to control your PCI within the strike zone. So it really helps with pitch tracking. It's one of the biggest things that really helped my game at the beginning of last year. Whenever I was kind of struggling at the beginning of the year, I did this and I took off from there. I was one of the best players in the game after that. So, uh, so yeah, d do that and let me know if it helps you because I know a lot of people have told me that it's helped them. So hopefully it'll do the same thing for you. The final, th the final thing with uh, with just the general uh, hitting tips is to observe your opponent's pitching patterns. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people might say this is guessing, um, but I think it's very different than guessing. Just observing, uh, you know, O2 count. Maybe your opponent throws curveballs an inordinate number of times. Maybe he's like seventy percent curveballs on an 0-2 count or a 1-2 count or something like that and you pick up on it all of a sudden you have a major advantage at the plate so so pick up patterns look at like first pitch what does your opponent do does he throw a fastball does he throw a slider a change up to a lefty uh, you know j just uh, look at all these different situations and how your opponent handles it 
and uh, you'll have a major advantage up there at the plate because you'll have an idea of what your opponent is doing and he has no idea what you're doing. So it's going to give you a huge edge. Just pay attention to your opponent's pitching patterns and you'll have a lot of success in MLB The Show. Okay, now let's get into some uh, to some different types of things. The first thing that we're going to talk about is something that I've started calling the 2K4 method. And this is a method that was kind of thought up by Cardinal Bird and by Movie Gaming last year, but not a lot of people took it up except for me. And so I kind of feel like I want to uh, I, I want to expand that to everyone so everybody can try it for themselves, but it helped me a ton with hitting. And it's called the 2K4 method. The reason it's called that is because um, the, the method entails until the fourth inning of every game, until the end of the fourth inning, um, whenever you're hitting, you are going to take until you have two strikes no matter what. And then once you have two strikes, it's just like a normal at-bat. Um, and, and this isn't like a strategy that uh, that you might want to use like whenever you're playing really competitively and you're not in a situation where you're trying to get better. But in a situation where you're trying to get better, this is probably the single best piece of advice that I've ever gotten. Um, it, it, it's so incredibly useful because it helps you do so many things. First, it helps you with uh, with pitch recognition, with patience. Um, it helps you become a better two-strike hitter, which is vital in MLB The Show. Uh, and and it, you can do a lot of things to practice while you're while you're trying to use this method. So. So what you can do whenever you're uh, whenever you're doing this method is you can um, practice pitch tracking. You know, just don't swing. Take your finger off the X button, like move your right hand, just move it away from the controller if you have to, and then just take your uh, the the left analog stick and practice following the pitches uh, with your PCI while you're sitting there taking pitches. Um, and uh, and then you know uh, once you once you're after the fourth inning once you're ready to hit you'll be a lot more comfortable uh, you know uh, moving the PCI around in the zone and stuff like that it, it's a very beneficial thing because a lot of times you'll end up scoring more runs in the first four innings than you would have in any of the other innings because you, you're forcing yourself to let the game come to you your opponents will walk you they will make mistakes with two strikes they'll realize just how patient you're being and then for the rest of the game after the fourth inning they're not going to be nipping around the corners or anything like that they're going to be coming right after you with strikes so the likelihood of you getting a lot of really good pitches to hit is very very high i love the 2k4 method um i think that it is uh one of the best tips that anybody could give in mlb the show to get better at zone hitting um, so if you haven't tried it, if, if you're really looking to get better, to get more patient, to be a smarter hitter at the plate, try the 2K4 method. I promise you it will work. Okay, another thing that I want to talk about is approaching at-bats uh, depending on the handedness of your hitter and the pitcher. So, uh, so righty on righty. Let's start out with righty on righty. Um, the, 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 the main pitch that you want to look to take advantage of are inside fastballs. If you can get an inside fastball that's over the plate that you can take advantage of and you have a bat that's quick enough, um, those are going to be the best pitches to hit more often than not. Um, when it comes to breaking balls and sliders and stuff like that, if your opponent is locating it on the outside corner of the plate, or really any pitch on the outside corner of the plate, it's probably best to lay off of those pitches, even if it's a strike. Best to lay off those pitches until you get to two strikes. If you have two strikes on you and your opponent makes a really good pitch on the outside corner of the plate... You're just going to have to do what, what, whatever you can to, to foul it off or to put the bat on the ball in some way. But it's an extre it's extremely difficult righty on righty to hit that ball on the outside corner, to hit a slider, to hit a curveball. Sliders are a little tougher than curveballs, but uh, but still, both are, both are pretty tough if they're located well. Now, when you can take advantage of a slider or a curveball is whenever they start it on the inner half of the plate and it breaks over the middle of the plate. That, you know, whenever 
wherever they hang a pitch, basically. And it also, and it it worked to me. It works better whenever it's in the lower half of the zone, and I can really kind of jam my PCI down there. Not jam, but get my PCI down there. And uh, it's in the middle of the plate, and they just kind of missed with a slider. You can hit those balls very, very far. But if it's even a little bit outside, I would lay off of it because you're gonna have to go the other way. And timing it up is just extremely difficult. And uh, usually the risk of swinging at that pitch is not going to be worth the reward because most of the time you're just going to fly out. So my best advice whenever hitting righty on righty is cut the plate in half until you have two strikes. Um, so basically anything on the outside half of the plate, lay off of it. Don't worry about it. it let it get called to strike. It doesn't matter, whatever. But anything on the inside half of the plate, you got to smoke. You got to take advantage of that because a lot of people are going to try to avoid throwing you those pitches. So whenever you get one, you've got to take advantage of it. So cut the plate in half until you have two strikes. Then once you have two strikes, just battle, foul off pitches, and then hope your opponent makes a mistake. Hitting lefty on lefty is is pretty similar to hitting righty on righty, except it's a little bit more difficult because you don't see it as often, and it's also it also feels like the ball is coming in at a at a different angle because there are more kind of quirky lefties than there are righties, um, and uh, it, it's it's pretty difficult to hit. Uh, the the best way to hit lefty on lefty is to just look to look for mistakes and and you have to take advantage whenever your opponent makes a mistake because it, it, and you know pitching to a lefty with a with a left-handed pitcher it's very difficult to make a mistake admittedly but you will make them from time to time and uh, as a hitter you've got to take advantage of it um, but a lot of the same principles apply as hitting righty on righty you know kind of cut the plate in half uh, kind of lay off anything outside and all that all that type of stuff um but one of the things that i've noticed hitting lefty on lefty is that the timing at least to me feels a little bit different than hitting righty on righty it's probably not but i think visually whenever i see a left-handed batter um I, I feel like i can wait on the ball a little bit longer because most of the time i'm facing a righty um and, the, and it's true that you can wait a little bit longer with a righty so it kind of throws off my timing uh because uh when i'm facing a lefty because I, it feels like i'm trying to be too quick to compensate and that it leaves me um exposed to to get exploited by curveballs and sliders and stuff like that so uh so yeah just really try to time those up uh right you know to to, to get on top of your timing when it comes to fastballs sliders curveballs i know that's not the greatest advice in the world but uh, you're just going to kind of have to manage. Go into practice mode. Practice hitting lefty on lefty as much as you can. And just, uh, you know, get it done. Now, hitting opposite handedness is very different than hitting uh, same handedness. Because uh, you can afford to be a little bit more picky. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, take advantage of every single mistake. You can be a little bit more patient at the plate because more pitches to you are going to qualify as mistakes. Another thing you can do is that you can kind of uh, let the slider and the curveball. You can kind of put it out of your mind because it's very difficult to locate a good slider or a good curveball to a lefty hitter. Sliders more so than curveballs but um and, and they're not that difficult to read oftentimes if if uh, your opponent is going to throw you a slider they're going to leave it over the middle of the plate and it's going to be a very easy home run for you so uh so yeah don't i i, I would just kind of not even worry about those and focus more on fastballs and change-ups because fastballs and change-ups are going to be a lot of the time that that's what you're going to be seeing the majority of hitting as a lefty so you've got to really start recognizing uh how how they move different and the, and the speed difference and you're going to have to try to time them up and all that and that's a challenge in and of itself but it's much easier than hitting righty on righty so uh so yeah just be picky take advantage of bad uh, sliders and curveballs, but don't worry about them because you're probably not going to get that many of them. And uh, just uh, another thing is you can open up your timing window a little bit more um, hitting opposite handed um, than, than you can hitting righty on righty or whatever. You can you can afford to, to kind of uh, 
to not be late, but to, to kind of let the ball get in on you a little bit more because um, hitting righty on righty, if you let the ball get in too far, it's going to be a jam shot and it's going to be just like a little blooper that gets caught, you know. But uh, hitting lefty on righty, um, a lot of those, if you're late on it, especially if it's not on the very inside corner of the plate, you're going to hit it with authority and you're probably going to hit it uh, into center or into one of the power gaps, even if you're just late, you know, let's say just late or you're on the late end of good timing or something like that. Um, and you're going to feel compelled to want to yank the ball, to pull it every single time. Uh, with a lefty, I know I certainly feel that way. But if you open up your timing window and, you, and you're not afraid to go the other way whenever a ball's on the outside half or something, you are going to hit a lot better. Um, I, I, I would kind of say the same thing that I would righty on righty, that to, if, if a ball's on the outside half of the plate, just kind of lay off of it. But it's not as true for hitting opposite handedness. You can, if you're really good with controlling your PCI and timing things up and stuff, you can hit pitches on the outside half of the plate uh, a little bit better with opposite handed hitters than you can with same handedness uh, hitters. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit easier to hit, but you've got to know what to look for whenever you're using opposite handed hitters. Okay, and the final thing that we are going to talk about is um, something that people have been asking me for a while, and that is when to power swing, when to use a normal swing, and when to contact swing. And uh, it's something I, I'll admit that um, using normal swing, I've always used it. I've never really used anything else, and uh, and um, except for, for a short period earlier this year, I would use power swing a good bit because your PCI was so big. But uh, for the most part, I've always used normal swing. But uh, for this video, I went around and I tested. I played some events. I played some Battle Royale. And I tested uh, all different types of swings in certain situations and with different types of hitters and stuff like that. And I've kind of changed my attitude on it. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and go through when to do these things. First, um, talking about power swinging, it is uh, something that you're going to want to take advantage of. I, I haven't. Um, up until this point, but now I'm starting to see the benefits of it, but you have to understand when to do it. Um, I would reserve power swinging for guys that have very high vision, first of all, most importantly, and to a lesser extent, very high contact. Um, if they have a uh, good power to go along with that too that's that's a that's a bonus that's a, that's huge you know you're gonna have uh, a borderline elite hitter at that point. But if they have uh, good vision and good contact, you want to use power swing. And I was kind of skeptical of this idea at first until I put D. Gordon at the top of my order in, in my event lineup. And uh, he promptly went two for two with two home runs with me using power swing. I'm not guaranteeing those results, but that sold me on the fact that even if you have a guy that doesn't have much power in the game, but has really high vision and high contact and stuff like that, that if you power swing with them, you can hit home runs with those guys. You can get high exit velos with those guys. And it's a lot safer to power swing with those guys because you're working with so much more real estate uh, with your PCI. And and that that that's the, the most important thing. With a guy that has a lot of power, but doesn't, but has like terrible vision, in contact and all that think of a guy like chris davis or joey gallo or someone like that you don't really want to power swing with those guys because they um they just don't have enough real estate on the pci for you to consistently be able to square up pitches uh that that um with using power swing it i mean hell it's all it's almost hard to do using normal swing sometimes but with power swing, uh, I mean, you have to hit it on the money. And whenever your PCI is the size of a pitcher's, that's kind of hard to do with a guy like Joey Gallo. So I would uh, I would avoid using power swings for those guys because um, it's just a little it's a little too tough to do. I, I, I think you're starting to get into to uh, diminishing returns whenever you start to do that. But if your guy has really good vision and you're comfortable with his PCI size, I would highly recommend using power swing with those guys because you can get some crazy exit belows with guys that don't have much power, if any, at all. So, uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. 
uh, as far as normal swing goes, this is going to be the swing that you're using most of the time. Oh, one uh, another another note about power swing: don't do it with two strikes, um, unless unless it's a extraordinary situation where you really need to like do something major, um, and you aren't afraid to strike out. Uh, don't use it with two strikes. Um, yeah, so so just keep that in mind because it is very difficult to check swing and stuff like that with power swing, and your PCI is going to be smaller, so you would strike out a significant amount more if you if you were using it with two strikes. Only in uh, in counts with less than two strikes, but normal swing, normal swing uh, is going to be your most often used uh, 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 type of swing. And you're going to use it uh, most often with guys that have like a lot of power, but don't necessarily have a lot of contact or vision or anything like that. They're just going to have kind of small PCIs to begin with. You want to use normal swing so that you can tap into the power that's already there. Uh, you don't really need a whole lot more power than, than what's already been given to you with those types of guys. And uh, so, yeah, just work with a PCI that you're given and, uh, and just normal swing and you should be good. And uh, you can use it with a variety of different types of players. Um, but uh, usually th th that's kind of those are the types of players that constitute lineups nowadays, really. So, uh, so yeah, just kind of just kind of use it like that with those types of players. And and uh, if you know, if you don't really know what to do in a situation, whether to power contact normal, uh, I would kind of default to, to a normal swing because it's going to be the most reliable one. Um, and, and nothing, nothing funky is going to happen, uh, using normal swing most of the time. So, uh, so yeah, just, uh, just keep that in mind. And, uh, finally with contact swing, I would rarely use contact swing hardly ever. Um, there are a few situations where it might make sense though. Um, only uh, use contact swing if you are uh, in a situation where you really need to get a ground ball or uh, you know you just really need to put the bat on the ball and you're trying to avoid a strikeout like if the worst case scenario in the in a particular situation is a strikeout and you can get by with a ground ball to the second baseman or something like that that's the type that's the uh, type of moment where you can go with contact swing and it makes some kind of sense uh, it also makes a little bit more sense with uh, with the lower PCI, with the smaller PCI guys that may have a lot of power in those situations because those guys so often do strike out. So um, if you're not looking to make anything big happen, but you're just looking to get a run across or to move a runner over or something like that, at that point, a contact swing could make some sense. For example, if you had a runner on third with, uh, with nobody out or with one out, and the defense was playing back, so they weren't playing in or whatever. At that point, uh, depending on the score or whatever, uh, you might want to go ahead and do a contact swing, just hit a nice little ground ball, and uh, and get that runner in. But other than situations like that, I would not use contact swing. I don't think it's worth it. Um, but yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, if that situational hitting tutorial is something that you guys uh, want to see, if it's something that you're interested in, leave a like on this video and that will let me know, hell yeah, I do want that. And leave a comment saying, yeah, make that video. Uh, that's something that I need help with. That's something that I want to see. And, uh, and I will make that happen for you guys. Um, but yeah, leave a like on the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, share this with a friend that may be struggling hitting in Diamond Dynasty or something like that. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. I will see you guys later. But until then, peace. Mm -hmm.